on this week's Most Craved. America, it's what we're reviewing. Civil War style, boom. Hey guys, welcome to Most Craved. I'm Jenna Bush with Legion of Leia. And I'm William DiBiani with Crave Online, and I hope you've seen Captain America Civil War, because we're going to be talking about it, and it's going to be full of spoilers. Spoilers. So uh, uh, if you've seen it, keep watching. If you haven't seen it, don't, unless you don't care, in which case, where are you watching this? You've been warned. You've been warned. Okay. Yeah, Captain America Civil War uh, was quite good. I absolutely loved it. It is, without a doubt, my favorite Marvel movie. Okay, now why is it your favorite? And also, what was your last favorite? Last favorite was Winter Soldier. Okay. So it's not really that surprising. That That's this... still my favorite. Yeah, I, I, love, I love it. But this one I loved more. Um, first of all, like in the comics, it's a little easier, and I know we've talked about this before, but a little easier to skew toward one team. Team Cap. Ah. Um, in this particular version, it makes both sides make sense. Both sides are absolutely compelling. Mm -hmm. Still Team Cap. This was in my trunk, <laughs> just saying. Well, it's interesting because in the comics, we talked about this before, like when they even announced that they were doing Civil right. War, uh, the idea that in the comics it was all about your identity. Should the government know your identity right. if you're a superhero doling out violent justice on whoever you think is a bad guy? Yes. Also, <laughs> it didn't make any sense because they had previously established on multiple occasions that S.H.I.E.L.D. knows every superhero's secret right. identity. Right. So it made no sense to me whatsoever, and I could never quite get behind it, even though a lot of stuff that happened in the story was really cool. Right. Here, it makes a lot of sense. It totally does. It really does. It's very simple. It's just collateral damage should superheroes have governmental oversight. And if they have governmental oversight, which government and how do we keep that group from actually being corrupt We itself? can't. Hail Hydra. Well, yeah. That's, <laughs> that's the thing. Captain America had a really bad incident with this in Winter Soldier. He was like, yeah, I followed the government. Turned out they were secret Nazis. Yeah. Oh. So oops. I get it. Like, it makes perfect sense. Yeah, it totally does. Um, I think they played it very well. You know, was it really interesting? Hmm. Totally small thing, but they used very different takes in the trailer that they than they did in the film in a number huh. of cases. Like I don't think I the whole thing where um, you know, uh, Cap says, "Well, he's my friend." Well, I I was your friend too, or whatever the line was. It was all mournful in the trailer, and it was kind of like pissy. Mm. The movie. I don't know. I just thought that I like when they do that. They do that a lot with Marvel movies. They did that with um, Iron Man three as well. Did that? Yeah. I honestly, some, I, I, yeah, I don't watch trailers as much as I used to. I used to every time I went to see a movie, there'd be a trailer, and I'd see the trailer over and over and over again. Now I see it maybe once or twice. Yeah. So it's not as freshly ingrained in my head. But that's interesting, and I think that's that's good without being annoyingly misleading. Yeah, it was just enough that it was interesting. Yeah, I like that because context really, really does matter. Um, so, so your team cap. Absolutely team Cap because, you know, Hydra. Okay. I'm, I'm actually, <laughs> it, here's the, in the real world, I'd be team Iron Man because yeah. it only makes sense. In the specific reality of, of Marvel Cinematic Universe, it, it's team Cap because we can't trust anybody right. except Cap. Someone made a point online, I wish I remember who it was, I can't take credit for it though, that Captain America is actually kind of a warmonger in these movies that he just can't, he, he's even, like, he even like considers leaving, not being a soldier anymore, and he just can't live unless he's fighting someone or something, and that maybe he's not actually as pure and heroic as we make him out to be. I mean, it depends what you think of as pure and heroic, because if he's, you know, and, and of course there are things with some career soldiers can't, can't not be part of the fight. You could mm -hmm. also look at it as he can't be part of not doing the right thing. And, you know, and here his motivation is his friend, you know? I mean, that's, that's one major motivation anyway. Right. Um, and I, I really liked the, the dynamic between them. I thought that was really beautifully done. Um, and I think, you know, it's interesting because there's so many parallels with Batman v Superman here. We talk about moms. Oh, my moms. God, so many in some respects in the same about, movie. Yeah, we talk about collateral damage. Yeah. Superhero fighting superhero. Uh, Baron Zemo's plot is basically the same as Lex Luthor's plot, except it makes slightly more sense. Yes. It's still his plot holes. Well, sure. But like, there's, he had no way of knowing Iron Man would actually get to Siberia. Right. Like, at the end. Like, yeah. that's contrivance. Yeah. But, but, I, but I thought he was an interesting villain because he wasn't just pure evil, um, unlike just pure crazy Lex. Well, Lex is, seems to be motivated by stuff. Crazy. <laughs> he's crazy, but it's also corporate greed. Yeah. And here, he's motivated by something very, very human, and we can understand it. Like, yeah. imagine if Batman v Superman, everything else is the same except Lex Luthor's dad. The other right. Lex Luthor died 
right. in the Superman fight. That oh, would make so hey, much more sense. That would have been a good idea. Yeah. I mean, not that we're saying that Batman v Superman needs to be more like Captain America Civil War specifically, but Captain America Civil War did basically the same story, mm -hmm. and it made a little bit more sense. And I think the other big difference, of course, is that Batman v Superman, we were just meeting a lot of those characters for the first time. Here right. we've gotten to know them, and we yeah. understand where they're coming from. So it feels like friends are hurting each other, as opposed to two strangers who disagree with each other's ideologies without ever really having met or talked about it, yeah. decide to kill each other. Yeah, and I think the big fight between everybody was incredibly well done. There was enough humor. There was mm -hmm. enough of, yeah, I'm going to kick your ass, but I really do like you as a person. Yeah. And it really, I thought, because that could go, that could have gone very wrong. And I thought it was really funny. I thought, um, I well, we'll we'll talk about Spider Man, but I, <laughs> we'll save that for a minute. Yeah, we'll save that for a minute. Yeah, but even even Ant Man, just even the few moments that he had were brilliant, brilliant moments. Yeah. Well, honestly, I just want to get back to that central conflict, even that fight. Um, this is a story that, unlike Batman v Superman, which had everyone team up at the end to fight a giant monster, here's one where the end they they don't end up putting aside the differences. Yeah. Even no one dies or anything like that. I mean, James Rhodes breaks his spine, which is terrible. Yeah. But like it's it's not about that, and it's actually something like a, a an exposed nerve yeah. that we can keep pushing in future sequels. Oh, absolutely! And I think that's actually more dramatically interesting in I the long so run. Too. But I do want to say this: I know a lot of people really want to have a feud between uh, DC movies and Marvel movies, or even Fox's X Men movies yeah. and Marvel movies. Um, don't. No, it's not about that. It's, it's not about, about whether or not you like the specific movie. It is. And also, you're allowed to like them all. Yes. I've, I've loved both DC and Marvel my entire life. Absolutely. And you're also allowed to only not like some of them when they disappoint you. You don't have, right. to, you don't have to have fealty to one or the other. This isn't like when you were a kid and you could only afford so many comics so you had to pick Marvel or DC. You can enjoy however many you want. So just enjoy what you like. And if you don't like it, it's okay to say so. No one's... You know, I mean, yeah, some people like one more than the other, but it's not well, about been... being biased. It's about we all want good superhero movies, right? Right. All the time. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I I love I love DC. I absolutely love DC, and so it's it's just it's just this specific movie. Yeah, and Marvel has been, to its credit, very consistent. They took them. They had a few. Iron Man was great, and then they had a couple of wobbly bits with Iron Man Two and the Incredible Hulk, and then Thor they found, the Dark World. Thor the Dark World was in the middle there, but for the most part, they yeah. found their footing. Right. And I know some people are like they're kind of samey. They have a similar tone. But, and that's true, but if you're looking for stuff that doesn't feel like a superhero movie uh, or doesn't feel like a Marvel movie, watch non-superhero movies because Marvel has found a groove. I don't complain when like a new episode of The X-Files feels like it's of a piece with the last episode of right. The X-Files. This is one giant franchise. Yeah. So this feels like the other Captain America movies. This feels like the other Marvel movies. That's fine. It's consistent, and I like it. Back, we, back to the story. Can yes. we talk about Black Panther? Because Yes, he's really cool. I love him. Oh, my God. Okay. First of all, costume, which we saw before, we already knew about it, but so cool. Yeah. So cool. I like that they went with like the earlier like Christopher Priest version. Yeah. Uh, that's my favorite run on that character. Yeah. So seeing um oh, what's that wonderful gentleman's name from the from the Hobbit? Oh, uh, Martin Freeman. Martin Freeman. Seeing Martin Freeman come in as Everett Ross was a really yeah. nice. Yeah. It was really cool. But but the casting was perfect. I think it was he was so well done. Mm -hmm. So well done. Because, you know, when I when you know what side he's on, you know, those of us who've always been team cap. Where you know, before I went in, I was like, Oh, I don't wanna I don't wanna not like him. I, I <laughs> his motivations were perfect. He was he was brilliant. I I love Black Panther. You know, I was a bit worried, you know, because they're shoving all the superheroes in basically. Everyone yeah. but like Thor and the Hulk shows up and everyone from the TV series. But uh, I was I was really, really happy that with Black Panther in particular, they found a way to make him important. If right. not necessarily to the plot, because he really doesn't do that much right. plot wise. Thematically, he kind of ties it all together at the end. He's motivated by the same thing that motivates Baron Zemo. Yeah. And that moment between them at the end is actually, I don't want to go as far as to say it's poignant, but it's, it means it was something. It's lovely, yeah. And it's kind of interesting to see how the original guard, like the first superheroes that Marvel introduced, like Captain America and Iron Man, have been through so much that they can no longer really represent like a pure ideal. They've gotten kind of gray and muddied. And so we see Black Panther come in, and I'm going to represent a better ideal. Yeah. We see Ant-Man and Spider-Man come in, and they're going to represent the fun that Captain America and Iron Man can't have anymore. Yeah. They're too serious now. I mean, they're serious enough that they can be in a good movie, don't get me wrong, but you can't have a zippy Captain American movie next. Yeah. You, you can, on the other hand, have a movie about relatively uh, young, naive, amateur superheroes like Ant-Man and Spider-Man. Yeah. Who are coming at exactly the right time because it was getting really dour, Yeah. and then Ant-Man and Spider-Man are just like, we're cool. Okay, so Spider-Man. Yes. Totally nailed Spider-Man. 
so perfect. So perfect. He, he makes Star Wars jokes, which is why which is, I'm wearing that. Yes, but it's, it's been brought up. And I think it's not, it, it's, he's a nerd. Yeah. And he doesn't know what an Imperial Walker is called. Oh, but it's, a, it's an old movie, Pibbs. You and I are old people. I appreciate that it's an old <laughs> movie, but Star Wars is coming out right now. I'm pretty sure you know what it is. I know, what it, I but it's adorable. I always imagine that Spider-Man would be a bit more of a Trekkie. He could so, totally be a Trekkie. But I still feel like he'd know Trekker. what that was. Trekker. Trekker, depending on, we don't mean to be offensive. Whatever you I love work. Star Trek. But I, I Star also, Trek world peace, Star Trek, Star Wars, DC, Marvel. I like all of them. There you go. Mm-hmm. Uh, but but uh, his tone was perfect. Tone and was perfect. I know how how I felt about Aunt May being so young, mm-hmm. or she just looks good. But I'm I, the the dynamic. I'm I'm on board with it. I like to think that that movie only you uh, from like the early '90s, where Robert Downey Jr. and Marissa Tomei totally hooked up, right. is actually canonical in the Marvel right. universe now. I think oh, it's great. I like that. Yeah, I totally um, like that. So I'm hoping in the Amazing Spider-Man or Spider-Man: Homecoming, sorry, yeah. uh, that when that is Tony Stark is that just going to be Aunt May's love interest? And yeah. It's going to be really super awkward, and it's going to be really really great. <laughs> Let me ask you this: This is the one. I don't know if it's big, but it's a thing I find a little distracting, and it feels like they were trying to make it work plot-wise, but it really doesn't. If you think about it, Tony Stark enlists a miner to fight a war against trained killers what? in another country. Eh? Well, questionable, sure, but it is Tony Stark. It is Tony so, Stark. And also said teenager is is rather good with sticky stuff. He is good with... St- a terrible thing that I just That said. is... Yeah, there, that's a bag of worms I'm we're not going to so open. I'm so sorry. I'm so just going to do that. <laughs> that. Somewhat questionable from someone who's claiming to have the moral high ground. It's one well, of the... It's one yeah. of the it, there's, listen, there's stuff in Civil War that doesn't quite work. It's not a perfect movie. And I know it's a cliche to say it's not perfect, but... Uh, but it's not, and it's not even my favorite Marvel movie. I put S- Winter Soldier ahead of it. Favorite, uh, but it's it's quite good. I think it really delivers kind of what we wanted, which is first off, amazing fight. Yeah, the so Red good. Rover fight oh where everyone's God. just standing either side and runs at each other. Amazing, clever use of everyone's powers. Really, really cool. Uh, has a an actual reason for the heroes to fight each other mm-hmm. that doesn't feel like we couldn't come up with a better idea. Yeah. It actually really makes sense. Uh, and it sets us up for future movies without seeming like in Avengers Age of Ultron, like they had to shoehorn all that setup. In. Yeah. So it does everything it needs to do. I think it was very satisfying, and I liked this one. I loved it. Loved it. Cheered in the movie theater. Clapped. I know they can't hear me. Doesn't matter. Clapped anyway. <laughs> I think it's okay to clap. It's okay to laugh. I mean, no one in the no one in the, none of the actors can hear you laugh. Yeah, that's it's a true. natural reaction. You like something, you clap. You know. Like happy slaps. Yay. (laughs) Everybody, thank you very, very much uh, for watching us on Most Craved. Uh, We hope you liked Captain America Civil War. And if you didn't, let us know why. Tweet us at Most Craved. That'd be super cool. We'll be back next week with more stuff. Bye.